Radford University, a small campus tucked within the Appalachian Mountains and home to about 9,000 students. When the average person hears about Radford University, several thoughts may come to mind. Academic excellence, a small welcoming campus, great people to influence great social lives. But to an athlete, being a Highlander means something more. It stands for pride in their college and staying humble in their surroundings. It stands for commitment, working around the clock to be the best that they can be. It stands for teamwork and building a family around each other. Being a Highlander is more than being an athlete to these players. And like all athletic programs here at RU, the basketball programs take these morals and put them on a pedestal. The Radford University women's basketball team was coming off of a successful 2017-2018 season as they finished with a 24-9 overall record and a 15-3 record in the Big South Conference. Coached by Coach Mike McGuire, they represented Radford University in the Women's National Invitation Tournament, more commonly known as the WNIT, after losing to UNC Asheville in the Big South Championship game. After a big opening round win against the Penn State Nittany Lions, the Highlanders fell to the James Madison Dukes to end their season. The Radford University men's basketball team was also coming off of one of the most prolific basketball seasons in program history as they finished 23-13 with a 12-6 Big South record. They played a tough slate of games including opponents like Ohio State, Vanderbilt, Virginia Tech, and Nevada and played well enough to earn the third seed in the Big South tournament that would be held in UNC Asheville's own territory. That was until the Liberty Flames upset the Bulldogs in the semifinals, and due to seeding, the Big South Championship game would be played in the Dedman Center. It was then, with the game tied and the clock running down, that Carly Jones would write his name in the history books. the Highlanders were dancing to the NCAA tournament, where after an opening round win against LIU Brooklyn, they were defeated by the eventual champion, the Villanova Wildcats. At the beginning of the season, the teams began preparing to continue their successful play from the 2017-2018 season. Big plays were expected for the women's team by Destiny Walker, Kiana Johnson, Lydia Rivers, Jen Falconer, and Tina Lindenfeld. For the women's basketball team, there was a lot of commitment that had to take place for its players. There were study sessions, constant practice, weightlifting, and individual workouts that took place to play for the team and succeed. Coach Mike McGuire preached a lot about family, sisterhood, and how important it was for the team to stay together through thick and thin as they prepared to take on a tough slate of games, including the North Carolina State Wolfpack, Nebraska Cornhuskers, Virginia Tech Hokies, and the Virginia Cavaliers. The Highlanders hoped to get back into the Big South Championship for the second year in a row, only this time they expected to win and punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament. The men's team also returned a potent roster to the court this season as Coach Mike Jones returned for his eighth season, a year removed from winning the Big South Conference Coach of the Year. The team was loaded with playmakers all around the floor, including Ed Polite Jr., Carly Jones, Travis Fields Jr., Caleb Tanner, and Devontae Holland. The Highlanders also added a graduate transfer from Kansas State named Maldo Sala. The team was expected to compete with their very tough schedule as they tried to lock up the Big South and get back to the NCAA tournament for the second year in a row, a feat never accomplished in Radford history. Just as the women's team, a ton of commitment and time was put in to be a member of the team. Their schedule was no joke either as they faced tough tests on the road against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, Texas Longhorns, Clemson Tigers, and the Maryland Terrapins, repeating the same style of schedule they had faced in the season prior. With grit and determination, the Highlanders hoped to run away with the conference and get back to the big dance two years in a row.
The season has come to pass for both the women's and men's basketball teams, and both programs left everything on the court, having very successful campaigns in their own respects. Mr. Rick Watson is the Director of Broadcasting Operations here at Raff University, and he is known as the Voice of the Highlanders. To discuss the season and get his perspective of the teams that represented the college, I spoke with him after the final games had concluded. Not really any surprises this year. Um, very uh, veteran squad back. Coach McGuire knew he had some good players back. He had graduated the seniors from his first recruiting class, um, but he felt pretty good about the leadership uh, that he had returning. Players who played a lot of close games and had lost a championship game together. Uh, I think not a surprise, but I think it was a, a pleasant contribution that Sydney Nunley, uh, the center, had such a terrific season. She'd battled back from injury. Um, she had really worked hard in her rehab, nearly missed a season, and came back from surgery, and she was terrific. Coach Mike McGuire just recently received a contract extension during the offseason for the women's basketball program, and I asked how important that was for the program. Well, if we keep him, uh, contract extensions do not necessarily mean the coach is going to stay, but if he does stay, it does give a nice uh, bit of a comfort zone, I know, for the department because he's been, he's been outstanding since he got here. Uh, he, he is a guy that's um, right now in demand because of what he's built here and winning a championship. So uh, we'll see how it plays out going forward, but there's no question that uh, we definitely want to keep Coach McGuire here, not only because of what he does in terms of being a good basketball coach and winning championships and winning games, but uh, he's a good representative of the department. He's very good for the young ladies on his team, and, and he's a guy that we know we can talk to about anything, and he always gives us you know, complete access to his program, and guys like that are rare. The women's team was actually very successful this season, winning the Big South Tournament and qualifying for the NCAA Tournament. The team does lose Destiny Walker and Alexis Jackson this year, but they are still returning plenty of talent and will absolutely look to contend yet again next year. I asked Mr. Watson about how important making the NCAA Tournament was for this team for their experience going forward. Yeah, and they'll also likely lose Lydia Rivers. I think she's graduated and she's likely not going to return. Um, I think anytime you have young players that taste that success, it's good for the overall you know, value of your program. It shows recruits as well that you can come as a young player to Radford and, and compete. Um, there are some good players returning. Um, the roster is always unsettled. You never know what kind of transfers might come in, but um, he does lose a lot. You know, Destiny's going to be out. and. and uh, Obviously, if uh, Lydia does not return, which it looks like she will not, um, I mean, you're losing two of your bulk players right there, but there's no question now that this team knows what it takes. There'll be enough leadership in place, and uh, he can use that as motivation going into next season. The men's team suffered a different fate this season, losing to Gardner-Webb in the Big South Championship game. But this was still a very successful season for the Highlanders as they knocked off several quality opponents on the road, including Texas and Notre Dame. I asked how beneficial that was going through a tough schedule and coming out with a few big wins. It was imperative. Um, I think that's what Mike wanted to do. He wanted to go out and challenge his team. He doesn't believe in you know, loading up on lower mid-majors and getting wins and, and, you know, it doesn't help you come conference time. And they really had a terrific non-conference uh, non season this year. They did turn a lot of heads with those wins against Notre Dame and Texas and could have had a couple of more. But I think the team uh, gets excited about playing games like that. And, uh, you know, they just ran into a buzzsaw here, you know, against Gardner-Webb. The formula looked like it was going to repeat itself going on the road in the conference and then the host school loses. We come back on Sunday like two years ago and beat Liberty and we couldn't get it done against uh, Gardner-Webb. But uh, uh, yeah, overall the non-conference schedule is something the coaches look at very closely and they always put it together. There's a purpose to all those tough games. They're not just games that make the department money, but it also helps uh, with the basketball team's character and their development. One of the most prolific players in Radford history, Ed Polite Jr., has finished his career at the Dedman Center after another great season and a fantastic career. I asked Mr. Watson how big that was for the Highlanders and how he expects them to replace a polarizing figure like Ed Polite Jr. He's irreplaceable. I mean, you're going to have to just look at Ed's career and realize, my goodness, uh, I think people do that know the program, the fans understand, but the all-time leading rebounder, the second all-time leading rebounder in the conference, he's going to finish in the top five and five or six different categories for this program. So uh, he's a guy that you can't just plug somebody else in. They have to find that person. Um, and they don't have him yet on the roster, I know. But uh, it's, it was a joy to have Ed here for four years. He just kept getting better and better every season. 
Uh, he got his body into better shape seemingly as he went along because he knew that he was going to be the focal point of a lot of team scouting reports. And uh, the legacy he leaves behind here is one that won't be forgotten. There's no question. At times this season, it really felt like it was a coming out party for point guard Carleek Jones. There were times when he would take over games. For example, when they played Hampton earlier in the season. He hit two insane shots towards the end of the game. I had to ask him, with Chris Clemens leaving Campbell this season, can Carleek Jones become the sort of face of the Big South and how far could he take this team in the years to come? Well, he is clutch. He's got that in his, in his blood. I mean, he just wants the ball in that situation. It's not an accident that he hits these shots. I mean, that's just the kind of makeup that he has. And he has fun doing it. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't shy away from it. And that's, it's very sincere, which you really like to see. But, uh, you know, in terms of the face of the league, you know, I don't know if Carleek really would want that, you know. Um, you know, Chris Clemens took uh, this league by storm with what he did points-wise. And, and what he did nationally, you know, finishing as the third all-time leading scorer in basketball history. So uh, I don't know if um, Carleek or anybody is going to live up to the legacy that Chris set for the conference, but for this team, there's no doubt that he can be the face of the 2019-20 Highlanders. As you can see, Radford University student athletes put their blood, sweat, and tears into the basketball programs. They put countless amounts of hours and effort into working their craft and bringing home glory to Radford. To have the heart of a Highlander is something that these players will never take for granted.